Welcome, Greek U Nation, to episode number 264 of the Fraternity Foodie Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Eilon, CEO of Greek University. I'm a speaker and a two-time author. Our second book is called From Letters to Leaders, Redefining New Member Education and Leveraging Belonging to Eliminate Hazing. So go to Amazon and pick up that book today. We call these episodes the Fraternity Foodie Podcast because there is nothing like great food to bring college students together. Fun fact, doing mission work can be incredibly rewarding for our college student listeners. As part of a Rotary Club as an adult, I was helping to bring water wells and clean drinking water to impoverished nations around the world. So find out how you can get involved today, whether that be with other students on your campus or with civil organizations like Rotary that are looking to change the world and make it a better place. Now, along those lines, I have a very, very special guest, two special guests with us today. Tomi Dobbs is a nine-year-old fourth grader from Lexington, Massachusetts, and her mom, Faith, leads the Student Education Initiative in Faith Kenya Mission, which is a charity organization. They believe that together with friends and schoolmates, kids can make a difference in each other's lives with regard to literacy, gun violence, and generational poverty, both here in the United States and also abroad. Welcome to the show, Tomi and Faith. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, it's so great to have both of you on the show. I know that our listeners are going to really, really enjoy this episode because it's not every day that I get to talk to a nine-year-old. <laughs> I think it's it's so amazing to see all the stuff that you're doing. So, Tommy, I mean, you're a nine-year-old fourth grader living in Massachusetts. You lead the Student Education Initiative for the Faith Kenya Mission, which is a charity organization. I think all of our listeners want to know what made you want to get so involved in literacy, gun violence, and poverty eradication at such a young age. Well, first in literacy, I was so I was four years old, and I was reading the Three Little Pigs in the Car, and we were going to drive to the zoo. So. On the way there, I saw this little girl. She was maybe about my age, and she was on the road. To, um, she was on the road, and she felt she looked lonely and sad. So I asked my mom to stop the car, and she did. And uh, and then and then she opened the door for me, and and I got out of the door with my three little pigs book, just marching. And then going, and then going, um, going to the little girl and uh, asking her, "Are you okay?" And she said, "Yeah, I'm okay." And then I read, we read the book together. We were laughing almost the whole time. After that, I said goodbye, and that made me, that made me feel, um, really uh, interested and determined to help other people like just like her. Wow. That's an amazing story. Thank you for sharing that story. I mean, I think it gives us all hope that, you know, there's somebody looking out for us, no matter how old we are, if we're eight years old, nine years old, or 99 years old, that there's always somebody that's looking out for us. So I, I think that's fantastic that you made your mom pull over so you can just spend some time with somebody who felt sad because we all feel sad sometimes. And so to have that support, that is big. So that's a great job, Tommy. You just did an incredible job. And Faith, I mean, you're Tommy's mom. You obviously raised her very, very well. You know, why did you decide to start Faith Kenya Mission? You know, um, I grew up in a small village in Kenya, and I had to walk miles and miles and miles to get water. And also, we relied on uh, rain for the crops to grow. And so that my mom, so that we could sell them for me to go to school. Now, you know, I was on and off in school because there was no money. And I told my mom, truly, we need to find another way to survive, mom. So the only other option was uh, maybe we try business. So my mom gave me $5, equivalents of $5, those are almost 550 Kenya shillings. And I started um, buying uh, cabbages in the market and selling them. And we, I was able to raise money and to take myself back to school on, you know, on and off and also save. Now, when I was in the market, I saw uh, $1 and it was equivalent to uh, like 75 Kenya shillings. And I was like, hmm, one time 
I want to, one day, I want to go to the United States of America and see where is that, where these dollars are. Because at one dollar, you know, of course, it says the United States of America. So I worked hard, saved money, and I came here as a student, and I got my bachelor's degree in nursing, and I'm a nurse here in Massachusetts, and all along, I was, you know, as I do my visits, I collect, you know, shoes on the, on the, on the floor or, you know, where people, you know, leave stuff for, you know, for donation. If they say you can have if you want. Mm -hmm. And I was sending them to Kenya. But one time I thought, you know, clothes get torn or, you know, the, the impact of clothes is not as good as books. So I thought, what can I do? I started Faith Kenya Mission and, um, we're like, okay, what am I going to do? I start once that the organization, what we do is we collect books for the, like, since we're approved by the IRS, we started, um, we've collected over 75,000 over the last um, one month here in Connecticut, in, um, in Massachusetts, where we live and in, in New York. And the purpose of those books are because I grew up without books and I've seen the importance of education it is education which brought me here. And not even that, I'm able to see things differently because of the books I read even now. Books have helped me be able to communicate better, be able to see the world from another perspective, be able to be just effective. I mean, I have more confidence. Look, I'm talking here in this podcast. So I want the people in, in my village to get it that it's good to read and read extensively and even my daughter's books and the books they get from um, the school books, uh, book sales and book swaps. We, want, we are cultivating a culture of reading. Now here in the United States, the homeless who help us, they are reading, they, they take books, they show interest, so we give them books too, and they also take books for their families. The other mission for Faith Kenya Mission is because I walked miles and miles to get water, they uh we've we've been collecting money for water and also globally 2000 children uh below the age of 5 die every day of those 1800 die because of dirty water poor sanitation we can all make a difference if i make a difference in my village i want to do that in many other places and since the problem is global I think we can all join hands and provide clean water, either in Kenya, either in Cambodia or whatever. But at the same time, it's even more important to empower the people and tell them, we're not just giving you the water. There are expectations. It starts with you. Yes, you're getting the water, but how are you getting water before? If you're buying water, like for the schools, the schools, we all, all them accountable. The money they were spending on water, we tell them, can you provide sanitary pads, pads for girls? Because sometimes they don't go to school because some they don't have pads. It also, we expect that we want, we tell them, we need you to provide a meal, at least one meal, because some children don't come to school because there's no food at home. So by us providing this water to the school, then the school is providing at least lunch or breakfast. Wow. Then in, and the big scope is now eradicate poverty when people are educated and they have already empowered and they know the difference begins with themselves. They have to dream and initiate and have the initiative to follow their own dreams. Wow, Faith, you are just, I mean, a force to deal with and you want to tackle these huge problems. Um, it's amazing. I, I mean, I just don't see people every day that want to tackle these problems, not only locally, but abroad too. I mean, that's a big mission that you have. And so I, I respect that. I think it's fantastic. Um, but, you know, we do have problems here in the United States too, locally. Yeah. Uh, you know, Tommy, maybe give us some ideas on what children can do in school to support each other. So that way we can avoid some of these problems like gun violence, for example. Well, in gun, for, for gun violence, children, like in school, like maybe like when like they're in recess, lunch, or doing like games in school or any other collaborative activity, and, um, 
and and someone's left out or not really participating in it mm -hmm. not really answering the questions that you're doing and stuff kind of just like bring them over and say hey are you okay come on let's do this together or kind of just find a way or talk them into bringing them in so so everyone is kind of like connected and no one's like disconnected mm -hmm. because most of the warning signs for gun violence are uh disconnection isolation lack of emotional management and relationship skills even though these skills are practiced at home they certainly need to be um used in real life situations like at school Wow. See, this is the reason why I love the podcast, because I get to learn every single day. Today, I'm learning from a nine-year-old, okay? I mean, <laughs> that's just amazing. That is just incredible. That's a great answer. I don't think, Tommy, I don't think a lot of other uh, children your age can answer the question as well as you have just there right then. Uh, uh, just amazing. Uh, Faith, you know, you believe in the value of this book collection that you talked about. Talk to us about the books that you collect and talk to us about the value that those books have in Kenya. Oh, great. Um, the books are just, again, amazing. You know, we can see already the improvement in how, in the writing, how their writing, of, uh, how their, their writing a school is becoming better, mm -hmm. how even the communication is better. We do have exams, um, it's like, here we call them state exams, but we have exams to gauge how the students are doing. They are doing better because they're reading more, they're getting more exposed, they're they getting more articulate, you know, and they have goals, you know, all as we grow up, we only see teachers and doctors and, and you know, nurses, but now as they read many different books, they're like, oh, I can be the best musician. I can be a best violin player. I can be, so the horizon, it opens their horizon and see there are so many other things people can do. You don't have just to be limited to one field. You know, you don't have to be a doctor or a nurse or whatever. It's great to be a doctor or a nurse, but there are things, other things you can do. Finance, be accountants, be other things. Better your life. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing to see that improvement, to watch that. It must be so cool and oh, so yeah. rewarding for you to see those improvements. Um, you know, Tommy, it's interesting. I have a couple of kids myself. I have a daughter and I have a son also. And what's interesting about them is that, you know, my son thinks that he's really good in math and he is very good in math. Um, my daughter thinks that she's really good at reading. She is really good at reading, but they actually both are really good at both. But I think because of their gender, because they are a man or they are a woman, sometimes people fall into these traps thinking that, you know, the only people who could be good at math is are boys, which is not true, right? So do you think, tell me, do you think that the boys in your class are better at math or do you think that the girls are better at math? Personally, the girls are better at math. <laughs> but, um, but, but I, I want to support both of them because they don't really want anyone to be left behind. Yeah, that makes total sense. I think that's the idea is, is that if somebody is struggling, whether it be in math or reading, then we have to find a way to help them. So that way they can improve. But I agree with you. I think women, you know, are just as good or better than the men in math. But for some reason here in our country, we're just programmed to believe that only men can do math, which is ridiculous. I mean, you know, obviously that's not true, but we hear those kinds of things. So it's good to have your perspective as well. Um, and Faith, you know, I know you create employment opportunities here in the United States with your book collection team. So talk to us about how you create employment here in this country. So um, as I said, uh, we use the homeless people to, um, to uh, collect the books. So what I do is I just, I call the homeless ch shelters and I say, we have a book collection here and here. So I, first of all, I'll get Uber for them because they don't have transport. Mm -hmm. So they'll come and then they put the books in. We, bought, we buy the boxes from uh, Home Depot and UO. So then they'll pack the books there. And then we also use UO trucks um, to take them to the storage and then they pack them uh they put in the storage so we are creating employment all way around i mean we are using your trucks we are you know we are using uh, your boxes we are using home depot boxes we are we are using um the, i mean we work with the homeless and we pay them 15 dollars 
every hour to do to get the job done and then after they are done we uber them back to the shelter wow that is just amazing. You're creating those kinds of employment opportunities. Uh, you know, Tommy, I know you're working to collect funds towards clean water and sanitation for all the children that live in Kenya. How much money have you raised so far? So far, we raised $75,000. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Unbelievable. You should be so proud. That's a lot of money. Yes. That is a lot of money. Oh my goodness. I mean, just amazing. You know, you're really motivating me to go out and, and make the world a better place when you talk about these things, because, you know, sometimes even when you're in college, you think, oh, you know, what kind of a difference am I going to make? I'm only one person. I'm not going to be able to raise a lot of money, but here you are raising $75,000 towards clean water and sanitation for the children in Kenya. I mean, if you can do it, anybody can do it, right? I mean, that's the message. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Now, Faith, you know, talk to our audience about the healthcare missions in underprivileged communities that you have with a special focus on children and women, because you're doing dental missions, you're doing vaccinations, you're doing screenings, prescriptions, and more. How big is the need for all of these things in Kenya? You know, the women and all of them, women, men, and children, they have to walk 30, 40 kilometers to go to, an, to, go to a, a hospital. And sometimes they don't even have money to pay for that transport. And so they, they have to do the walking themselves, themselves under the sun, you know, Kenya is very hot too. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you see um, some people don't, they don't wanna go to get the help where we have a clinic. So what we do is we partner locally with, um, with the local doctors and we, we tell them, come to the village, they'll go to the villages, uh, they'll do blood pressure, even nurses, they'll do blood pressure checks. And then they just create also awareness, communicate them, uh, uh, communicate you know, the importance of vaccinations. Now, if anyone has like high blood pressure issues or diabetes, the doctor can give them a, uh, a prescription sleep. I mean, you know, after they do the checkups and everything, or they can even refer them to other doctors if, um, in the clinic if that is not their specialty. Uh, dental, um, again, the big problem is water. Uh, the water has a lot of fluoride. So like our, our balls, we are trying to do, uh, um, see if we can get a, a reverse, try to get rid of most of the fluoride so that the water is, we can take it. Now we haven't, you know, we, we are in the process of uh, working on the dental mission yet, so we haven't accomplished a lot of, of it, but we know the problem is fluoride and we just need to get more um, the fluoride out of the water. Uh, the blood pressure, uh, sorry, um, the screenings, we of course um, talk more about breast checks, I mean a breast exam. That one we tell the ladies, they can just do it themselves at the end, at the end of every month you know, uh, women or girls, we're, we're teaching it early that, you know, they just need to check their breast, you know, the, the, the local girl, uh, uh, peer uh, educated um, uh, uh, women there, they show them and girls too, some they, they've been trained how to show, how to do a breast exam. And then about cervical cancer, we allow them, we, we educate them when to start um, doing cervical cancer exams. And that's doing great. I mean, vaccination rate is good. Uh, blood pressure is, is, is still a, a challenge there. You know, blood pressure growth comes with kidney is more again, water related, but of course more people are taking the medications and we are telling them the medication, you know, you, your blood, if you, when your blood pressure is good, then the, you know, the long-term effects of, you know, of kidneys and whatever chronic kidney, you know, stage and is, you know, you know, the level, the, uh, the rate of at which your kidney gets damaged when your blood pressure is not controlled, it gets, it gets better if you control the blood pressure. So they're, they're getting it, you know, it takes time, but we are seeing that partnering with the communities is getting better because they are working within themselves. Yeah, that's really great to see. You know, I was talking, I have high blood pressure and I was talking to my father because my grandfather on my father's side, he was one of the guys that settled in Israel and made Israel, you know, the homeland that it is today. And wow. he had high blood pressure back then. And there was no medication when my grandfather was alive. There was no medication for high blood pressure. And basically, you know, he died because, he, you know, his, his blood pressure was always very, very high. 
And today, you know, it passes down in the generation. So I have high blood pressure because my, my grandfather had high blood pressure. And now I, I'm taking medication each day to correct it. And as long as you take the pill every day, your blood pressure is good. Yes. You know, and so it's amazing. You know, the longer that we live, the more that we discover in terms of medications and advancements in science that can keep us alive until 100, 120 years old. Absolutely. I mean, th these are things that weren't possible before, right? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, it's just incredible. Now, Tommy, you know, I think that you like to eat good food because I like to eat good food. And I think we're the same that way. And I get to Massachusetts. I speak there a lot on a lot of the college campuses there in Massachusetts. So where do you like to go to get a good meal in Lexington? Because I want to go try it the next time I'm in town. All right. Well, I'm going to take you three places. All right. The first place is Bertucci's Italian Restaurant. Oh my God, it has the best pizza ever. <laughs> pizza, pasta, everything, 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 everything. So then um, if you want dessert, then you can go to Rancatore's Ice Cream. It has nice ice cream, ice cream sandwiches, uh, milkshakes and stuff. And then um, for, for my dad's birthday last year, actually, I went to Sweet Thyme Bakery. It's in the Lexington Town Square. Mm -hmm. So are all these other um, Bertucci's and stuff. Um, and uh, <laughs> when I went there, um, it has really good cakes. They're not a lot of sugar but it's like st strawberry shortcake. They still have sugar though. See, I knew that you were the right person to ask that question because you're sending me for pizza. You're sending me for cakes. You're sending <laughs> me for ice cream. Perfect. We're going to get along just great. Every day, pizza, ice cream, and cake. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great. That is absolutely fantastic. So I will definitely go and check those places out and I'll send you an email. I'll let you know what I think about all those different places. Okay. All right. <laughs> so Faith, this has been so great to learn more about the Faith Kenya mission. Again, I mean, I have so much respect for what you and Tommy and every, all the other volunteers have been doing for Faith Kenya mission. So how can our listeners who are listening right now how can they connect with you? How can they donate to your cause? So they can go to our website, which is uh, www.faithkenyamission.com. Uh, and also they can, uh, they can call us to 781-266-7774. We also have a GoFundMe for Faith Kenya Mission. And also they can write a check to Faith Kenya Mission. And our address is 599 Canal Street, 3 East. Um, in Lex, well, in uh, Lawrence, Massachusetts, 01840. That is perfect. I know there's a lot of college students listening right now in the state of Massachusetts, and they like to just work and raise money for different nonprofits. And I think the Faith Kenya Mission would be the perfect place to go and, and either you know send money, send books, figure out a way to work with you. And I think that a lot of the college students, this is their opportunity right now is to work with you and help you to do what you're doing. Cause I think it's great. <laughs> yes. Very nice. Well, listen, Faith and Tommy, you are amazing. You're both superstars. So continue doing what you're doing. I'm proud of you. I want you to keep doing what you're doing because you're making the world a better place. And that is our mission. That really is our mission from God is to leave it better than what we found it. And you're doing it every single day. So just know that I'm so proud of you and uh, I'm going to keep cheering you on. I, I can't wait to see how all of this progresses over the years. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. You're very welcome. And to our listeners, if you like this conversation with Faith and Tommy, please like it on social media. Please share it on social media with other college students, your fraternity brothers, your sorority sisters. They want to know about all the great work that's being done at Faith Kenya Mission and how you can help them to accomplish all of their goals as well. So thanks so much for listening today. And we will see you on another episode of the Fraternity Foodie Podcast. Thanks so much. And we will see you next time.